Alright guys, welcome back. So, carrying on with our platformer, today we're going to be looking at how to add in checkpoints. Uh, so that when your character touches them, um, it saves your progress so far, and if you, you die at any point to one of the enemies, um, you go back to the checkpoint that you last touched. As you might have noticed, I've modified the room a little bit, I've just moved some stuff around, made it a little bit bigger, it's now uh, 1024 by 768 and um, I've added a new little purple uh, warp portal object, obj underscore portal, that just very simply on collision with the player will send you to the next room, just as a really easy way to transition between um, two different levels that I've got set up here. And now what I've also set up is I've added um, what's going to become our checkpoints throughout the level. I've added a new object called obj underscore checkpoint. Uh, its sprite is set up with two frames actually, the little black square that you, you saw on the level and a little white square. Uh, the little black square is what we're going to use to show when the checkpoint is inactive and when you touch the checkpoint with the player we're going to turn it white to show that it's active and all the other ones will turn black. Now in order to make sure that the object doesn't just animate endlessly and doesn't just flash between black and white, the very first uh, piece of code in obj underscore checkpoint I've set up is in the create event and the execute piece of code I've set image speed to equal zero, meaning that it animates you know zero frames a frame so it just it doesn't animate, it stays exactly on the frame it's on. And also just as a safety precaution I've just set it, the image index to be zero so we know absolutely for sure that when we make the image it will be on the first uh, first frame, which is this little blank thing. The only other thing uh, obj underscore checkpoint does is in the step event um, I've set image underscore angle plus equal to one just to make uh, it rotate on the spot and just look a little uh, more separate from the scenery around it since it's just this little blank square so it doesn't look like a bit of wall and as you can see running the game um, that's all they do at the moment, they don't change or do anything if you collide with them right now because they're, at the moment they're just little rotating blank squares, that's really all they do. Um, and at the moment, as you'll remember from before, if you run into an enemy, at the moment the whole level just restarts. And what we're going to eventually have the game do is when you collide with one of these, you'll respawn at whatever the last checkpoint was you touched. Now, in order to start setting this up, we're going to want to establish some things called global variables. And in order to do that, we're going to create a room that comes before the first two rooms of our game. And we're going to call this room rm underscore initialize. And basically, um, all I'm gonna, there's a million and, one, million and one different ways you can do this sort of thing using game start events or creating a, a permanent persistent object or whatever that exists before the rest of your game does using instance order and all that kind of thing. But all I'm trying to accomplish here is a way to set up some global variables for the game before anything else in the game happens. So before any of these objects are made before anything goes on we want some stuff to happen and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a room and I'm going to use the creation code of that room to set up those global variables and then move us on to the next room so that's the only purpose that this room serves hence why it's called room initialize so in this room first thing I want to make sure it's the same size as my other rooms which is I believe 1024 by 768 let me check, yep and make it the same speed as well reason to make it the same size is so the resolution stays the same because the first room that loads up is going to determine that if you're not using uh, views and all that kind of stuff. So now we've got our initialized room, we're going to go into the creation code in the settings tab for the room and this is going to bring up just another execute code box. Just It works exactly the same as any other uh, execute code action that would be in any other object and it's just it's executed whenever uh, this room is created. And what we're going to put in this code for when this room is created is we're going to establish some global variables. Now, the difference between a normal variable, say, potato equals 7, and a global variable, which just looks like this, literally just has the word global and a dot in front of it, making it a global variable, is that when you establish, say, like if I was in the player object, for example, and I said potato equals 7, potato would only equal 7 while working within the player object, like that variable is local to that object. Um, but if I make the variable global instead of local, then that variable is accessible and affected by every object. It stays in the game's memory uh, forever, 
until the game closes. So it can be accessed by anything. So I can set global potato equals 7 here, and now object, if I use some sort of equation in object player where I said like a equals global dot potato, the player, the player object would know what I was talking about because this is accessible to everything. I wouldn't have to do something like um, rm underscore initialize dot global potato or whatever to reference it. Now that's really useful because it means I don't have to carry around another object, say like a persistent object to carry, to hold on to all these uh, variables and change them. I can just establish these global variables um, that are just the variable, which is just what we need. The reason we need these now is we're going to be creating um, variables that hold what checkpoint is currently active and what room uh, that checkpoint is in and where that checkpoint is in the room. So like we can keep all of those variables and we can hang on to them regardless of where we are in the game, whether we're in a menu or whether we're moved between rooms and so on and so forth, because those global variables will stay in memory forever. So we're just going to establish four variables for our checkpoint and I'll explain what they do after I've typed them all out. So I'm going to have global.checkpoint equals no one global dot checkpoint r equals zero global dot checkpoint x equals zero global dot checkpoint y equals zero and then once we've established all those variables I'm just going to type room underscore go to underscore next so that when this room is made uh, we initialize all these variables and we just instantly skip to the next room without even rendering a frame or anything uh, global checkpoint is just going to contain the ID of the um, the checkpoint that's currently active. The reason it's set to no one while the rest is set to zero is so that like you know, <laughs> just in case there was an instance that uh, had ID zero or something, for instance. Um, I don't think that actually ever happens, but um, you can just be really safe by using no one because that always strictly means no instance ID. Uh, global checkpoint R. Um, it's just going to contain the the room uh, that our current checkpoint is in. Global checkpoint X is going to be its X position, and Y is going to be its Y position. It's going to be as simple as that. And those are going to get filled up whenever we touch a new checkpoint. And then, of course, room go to next, so that when this code is run, we just go on to the next room. So if we come back into room number one, the first thing we're going to do is actually make it so that when we touch these checkpoints, um, we fill up those global variables with the information we need. So in the step event, execute a piece of code, instead of just rotating, the first thing we're going to add is a simple collision check. So if place underscore meeting x, y, obj underscore player, open braces. Now we're just going to fill up those global variables with the information that this checkpoint already has. So global.checkpoint equals id. So our current checkpoint is the id of this checkpoint. Global.checkpoint x equals x. Global.checkpoint y equals y, the y coordinate of this object. And global checkpoint r equals room. So it's in this room. It's at that position, and it's that specific instance. That's all we really need to know. Um, and then the only other thing the step event needs to do is check to see if the checkpoint is currently active. So, like this ID matches, then set our uh, uh, image index, the frame of this object, to be uh, number one instead of zero, so that it shows the little white box spinning around instead of the black box. Uh, so first of all, we're just going to do a check to see if global dot checkpoint r equals equals room. So just making sure that um, before even bothering to do this check, um, see whether or not the checkpoint is even in the act current active checkpoint is even in this room. Because if it's not, then we don't even need to bother with this. But if it is, then do if global dot checkpoint equals equals id so if the current checkpoint global dot checkpoint is this specific checkpoint 
image underscore index equals one, else image underscore index equals zero. Simple as that. Oh, and I need to actually put that in the brace. Oh, I already had the braces. I just couldn't see them. <laughs> Let me stretch that out a bit. Okay. So that's everything our checkpoint object actually needs itself. So I mean, we can already see now if we run the game, and I jump up here and I touch this checkpoint, you can see it's turned into a little white square. If I jump over and touch this one, that's turned into a white square. But of course, those variables are filled up, but they don't actually do anything when we die. So now we just need to make those variables actually affect the player in some meaningful way. So how do we accomplish that? Well, first of all, we're going to go into our player object. And in the create event, I'm just going to use this uh, this code action. You could make a separate code action if you wanted, so it was separate from initializing the variables. But um, this is just another thing we're going to do whenever the, the player spawns. So along with setting these um, variables up, what we're going to do is check to see um, if global dot checkpoint r equals equals room. So if the currently active checkpoint is in this room that we're in now, which it should be, x equals, because we've just spawned, global dot checkpoint x, and y equals global checkpoint y. Um, if the currently active checkpoint is not in this room, when we've already spawned, then chances are it means we never we there was no active checkpoint, which means when we spawn we don't need to go anywhere because we just want to spawn wherever we were placed in the room by hand. So we just want to spawn there, for example. So now that we now that we're set up to spawn correctly, we just have to make sure that we're set up to die correctly. So at the moment when you collide with the enemy, um, from our previous tutorial, um, all I have it said to do is restart the room. Now we don't just want to restart the room and recreate the player object, what we want to do here is we want to do things that are a little bit more complicated than that. But there might be a lot of different things that cause us to die, so instead of write everything in here that we want to do whenever our character dies, um, we're going to put it in a script that we can just call whenever we want the player to be killed by something. So when, when you leave the room or you touch an enemy or you touch a spike or whatever, you can just call this script. So I'm, instead I'm just going to type scr underscore death, open bracket, close bracket, and a semicolon. As you can see, that's just a white piece of text now. I should probably made the script first so it would show you, but if you go to scripts and go create script, name the script scr underscore death, like that, so it's just, just an empty script. You can close it. SEO underscore death. And if I go back to the object underscore enemy, you can see now this has turned that yellow color to show that it knows what we're talking about. It knows what script it's calling. So instead of just restarting the room, we're going to be calling this script when we die. And now, basically, what the script is going to do is it's going to say if global dot checkpoint r does not equal zero. Now, if you remember from our initialize room, we set checkpoint r to equal zero at the start of the game. So if checkpoint r is zero, then it means we have no currently active checkpoint. And if we have no currently active checkpoint, we can do exactly the thing we were doing before with the enemy, which is just room restart. Or even game restart if you really wanted, I suppose. But if we do have a room that we're supposed to be in because that's where our current active checkpoint is. Then I'm going to say room underscore go to global dot checkpoint r. And then when that room starts and the player is in that room, the player is created in that room, it will see that global checkpoint r is equal to the current room and therefore it will set its x and y coordinates appropriately to be at that checkpoint. So now that's really all of the code that we need to write. So, if I now run the game and I haven't forgotten anything, what we should find happens is when I run into this checkpoint, you can see it turns white, if I fall down here and I run into this enemy, I respawn at that checkpoint. If I touch this one, hit him, I respawn at that checkpoint. And if I come all the way up here, if I touch 
this checkpoint, grab the blue warp, and jump over into here. So I'm now in a separate room entirely, but I died to this guy. I come back here to this room, and you see I've respawned at the, the correct checkpoint. And the same would happen if I came through here, jumped over this guy, activated this checkpoint, died to him, I respawned in the right place. So there you have it, download will be available in the description. Pretty simple system for just creating a very basic checkpoint system. Hope that helped and I'll catch you next time. Thanks guys.